Welcome back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my guest tonight currently serves as the United States Senator from the great state of New Jersey. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Senator Cory Booker. And I hope it's lovely to have you on the show, and I hope that this is, does not denigrate the position of a senator. You're always a ray of sunshine. I appreciate that. You have that. a positive energy, which well, I enjoy. I have to say this about you, because people who run things, yep. it says a lot to, about them, the people that work around. Your folks are just so nice. They're really, really kind. Thank you. They're just... I'm so lucky to work yeah, with you. Yeah, you are. such lovely people. I mean, <laughs> I love that they're, they're, they're so nice that your hair and makeup people offered me hair. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was very, very it. kind. Think about it, especially yeah. if you ever run for president. Yeah. <laughs> I will, I will. Now, yesterday... There's some fans out yeah. there. Now, uh, yesterday was Juneteenth. Yes. Uh, of course, the federal holiday, it fell on uh, Sunday, so it's being celebrated today. Yes. Now, uh, uh, two years ago, you introduced Juneteenth legislation that passed a year later... How does it feel? What does it mean to you for this to be a federal holiday now and to be celebrating the second year of it? You know, we were founded and conceived in the ideals of liberty and freedom, and right. we weren't free at that point. Women weren't mentioned in our founding documents, didn't have equal rights. African Americans were fractions of human beings. Mm -hmm. And this is a celebration of our country's continued work, sacrifice, struggle, death, and, and, and war uh, to eventually get yet another major step towards our highest ideals. So it's a time of, for me, a real celebration. And it's nice that it comes right before the 4th of July. It, it is actually really nice that they're paired so close together. Mm -hmm. and I well, hope, it's a reminder that liberty has to be for everyone. And also a reminder, I hope, that in this country, every generation has to work and sacrifice to secure the blessings of liberty because freedom is not ever won. It has to be re-won by every generation. Vigilance. Yes. Now, there has been a, a, a little bit of controversy with the... Already, this is only year two, the commercialization of Juneteenth. That yes. products being sold that are, like, Juneteenth-colored or... Yeah. Uh, or that, you know, Juneteenth mattress sales or whatever it is, yeah. you know, sort of the President's Day, Martin Luther King Ding of Juneteenth. How, how do you feel about the commercialization? Are you for it, against it? Or... Look, I, I, at the end of the day, I think the materialism and commercialism and consumerism... Those streams within our, our society often do detract from the nobility and the principles and the ideals, but also uh, for us confronting the fullness of our history. Like, I, I get very frustrated that Martin Luther King Day, we've created this Santa Clausification of Martin Luther King mm -hmm. uh, when he was wildly unpopular uh, uh, at the time he died. He was somebody that pushed this country uh, to expand its moral imagination. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that a day about freedom and liberty uh, is descending into consumerism, we can't let that happen. And so, of course, companies are going to try to do their best uh, to, to pad their bottom lines. But we have a responsibility uh, not to cheapen this holiday and to talk about it and speak about it and, most importantly, try to be about it, try to be and live uh, the ideals that we're celebrating. I, I think that's exactly right. I, I think that's exactly right. You have to remember what the, the day is about, what the celebration is. But the commercialization means it's a real American holiday yeah. now. <laughs> well, you add that... You, if corporations <laughs> are making some money, it's going to be with us you, forever. You, you add that with, uh, uh, you know, large amount of consuming lots of food, perhaps, and sure. it makes it very American. I said uh, to the band and the audience at the top of the last deck, I said, happy Juneteenth. I'm so new to, like, the Juneteenth celebration... Um, do you say happy Juneteenth? Because like, you don't say happy Good Friday, or you know, like, do you say no. do you say happy <laughs> Juneteenth? Because my only hesitancy is that it is the celebration of the ending of something so horrible. Right, but you remember it was a jubilee. People were celebrating at the time. It was this incredible moment of joy, and we should remember that and what it meant. Uh, so I definitely think if you're celebrating the Fourth of July, uh, uh, dear God, let's celebrate this as well. All right, good. From the man who introduced the bill himself. Yes, yes. All right. 
You recently, you recently uh, wrote a tribute to Judge Katanji Brown Jackson for the, the Time 100. Yes, and but, this is the 100 uh, most influential people in the world. Right. Yes. And w what was it like for you? What, what is the meaning of Katanji Brown Jackson's elevation to the Supreme Court? And what was it like for you to see the first black woman become a justice? So I have to admit, it was very emotional for me. I confessed to her that I'm sort of far down in seniority, so it takes a long time to, to get to me. And I just kept looking at this person in awe and seeing in her, I have to say, my family members or my ancestors. This is stunning that this is the first time. We've had about 118 Supreme Court justices. About 108 of them have been white men. And this is the first time ever we are putting a black woman on the Supreme Court. And part of me is sorry that it took so long. But part of me just was so overwhelmed with joy and emotion and gratitude to all that had to happen to get her there. And in many ways, I know that she is a glass ceiling breaker, a, a history maker, and that she will widen the pathway for more people to come. Because stunningly, uh, we are a nation that still, I, I'm only the fourth black person ever popularly elected to the United States Senate. I mean, most people don't realize that we are still in so many areas of our society, even in the private sector. I mean, if you just look at the number of women, forget black women, that get venture money to start businesses, it's about 1%. And so th this is a, a moment in American history where you have this magnificent, qualified person, forget her gender and race, she is extraordinary. But we, I just could not help but feeling this sense of hallelujah, this sense of thank God, this sense of what this really means for generations yet unborn to have this light helping to cast away uh, the remaining darkness that seems to cloud this country's ability to show its truth that we are a profoundly beautiful multicultural democracy with talent everywhere, but in some areas still we, we just select too few. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will ask Senator Booker about the proposed gun control legislation coming up in the Senate. Stick around.